89.3 and 88.5 Yes FM. Online at www.yeshome.com. Now on the free Yes FM iTunes app and the Yes FM Android app or the free tune in radio app. Search Yes FM Lima. Joining me in studio is David Washington. He's the author of the book, Stop Bringing Them to Church. Why the church <laughs> is, isn't. What? Or excuse me, let me try that again. Who the church is, isn't, and why we should keep it that way. David, welcome to the program. Thank you. Good morning. So, uh, stir it up a little controversy, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it's, I know the, the title just kind of does that, and you know, I, I've had people and the responses to just the title. Um, mm-hmm. they, uh, they think that it's some kind of radical thing. It's not radical. It's just biblical. So I guess if it's biblical, it might be radical. Yeah. The bi- the often time. the biblical is radical, yeah. well, at least in this world anyway. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> not radical in heaven, radical down here. <laughs> but it, 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 is, it really lays out something that, I mean, it's just in Scripture. Um, and it's not a, you know, it's not one of those titles that, I'm just saying something so, you know, I can get people to get the book. No, I mean, I really mean that. I mean, we really should stop bringing them in church. <laughs> and, well, let's start with the them there, first of all. Who are the them you're talking about? Because you're like, well, who are you talking about? Because there's lots of people I would love to stop bringing to church. <laughs> <laughs> and that that normally is the first question. The first question is that, okay, who is them? Um, the them would be unbelievers. Uh, what we tend to do is we tend to bring people to a church gathering uh, and we just tend to bring anybody. Mm-hmm. Uh, fact of the matter is, um, and I'm going to say what I've always said when speaking about this, uh, they have no business in the church. Now, I know that that probably, I know a lot of people right now are uh, saying, what? What's he talking uh, about? Um, but the, this is what the whole book lays out. It holds. It lays out the identity of the church. It lays out the purpose of the church. Uh, it lays out what we should, what we ultimately, as the church, should be. And then it lays out the the final reasons why why we should stop bringing them to church. And uh, I, I've always been very very heavy and so on the scriptures. So it's it's got copious amounts of scripture within it um which is the point the point is really of the whole book to bring back bring us back to the scriptures to do what the scripture says because that is our book Uh, it's not the world's book it's our book for us and how we should be and who God is and how we should glorify God and how we should worship and how we should live and everything as far as what pertains to life. It's just like the Lord says, you know, the words that I speak, their spirit and their life. And we tend to kind of kind of gloss over it. We know this. We know the verses and we know all that stuff. But do we really know the power in the word of God? And do we really look at it as life, Mm -hmm. not only for ourselves individually, but corporately as the church, as God's people, as his covenant community, as the body of Christ? Do we look at the word of God as life? And if we do, then are we ordering our life according to his word? Is that the foundation? Is that how we do everything? And we, you know, like it says on the back of the cover of the book, it's kind of like, do we ever ask why we do what we do? Mm-hmm. I mean, why? do? Why are we doing that? And that really is kind of the meat of the, the book is mm-hmm. really what is the purpose of the church? Who is the church for? And we were talking about this. We we're talking about, you know, you, you're, for most people, your Sunday morning gathering there into worship. That's what, kind of what we're talking about here. We're not saying never you know, bring a friend to a place where there are other Christians to, right. to share with them. That's not what we're saying. Right. Or what you're saying. You're saying um, for Sunday morning worship or wherever you, whenever that may be, that's not the place necessary for unbelievers. Because you say that's for Christians. That's not for underbelievers. Yes. So, so develop that a little bit. The The Bible speaks specifically. And even in, in even the term, let's just go to the term church. I say that. I get five people in a room. They're thinking five different things. Probably right. It's even understanding that I get. And let me even go further. I get five Christians in a room and they're probably thinking five different things. 
You can get five as, theologians in the room. Uh, and yeah, think I'm five. <laughs> and so it's really going back to just the basic uh, what the Word of God says about the church. We have to understand the church. You know, the church is not something for the world. The church is specifically the people of God. Now, understanding and the book lays out the purpose of the church. Now, this is not to say that we. You know, if somebody brings somebody, I mean, if, if an unbeliever says, I want to go, you don't say don't go. <laughs> it's like, okay. But we're not the, banning them at the door. Right. What, we're, what it's saying is that stop using that as your method of evangelism mm. and also understand what the purpose of the church and gathering is and who belongs there. Now, some would say that's, that's, that's kind of... You know, uh, that sounds elitist. It sounds like it's just exclusive. It is. <laughs> I mean, I, yeah. I mean, I'm, the, the Bible is very clear. I'll give you a great example from the scriptures. Jesus went off with his disciples and he wanted to go off just with his disciples to speak with them. And when he did that, there was a whole bunch of unbelievers who heard where he was and followed him. The Lord says, we're going we're gonna to serve them. You know, they followed us. But really, he didn't invite them. Mm-hmm. It, it was just for the disciples. That's the whole, I mean, and that's something I didn't put in the book. That's just one scripture that's not even there. There is a litany of scripture that talks about just the great privilege of being the church and what it means and protecting that. And the, the book just lays that out. Um, it, it doesn't, it's not saying, um, it's not saying don't ever let a believer in. That's not the name of the book. Yeah. Uh, the name of the book is literally stop bringing them to church. Stop using that as uh, a method of evangelism and that and in the book goes through that as well why we should stop doing that so as, a, as opposed to like the seeker model which says we're going to make this that's <laughs> our main vo- view of evangelism we're going to draw these people in hear, they'll hear the word of god and change it you're saying what we've done is we've made what should have been a gathering of the church to worship and glorify god into an evangelistic rally not that there's anything wrong with evangelistic rallies nope but that's not church. But that's not, yeah, exactly. It's understanding the purpose of the church. If your church gets together and they want to do uh, evangelism or they have a day where it's like, okay, this is our day. Like a, we got evangelism. Revival services. We'll have a night. Well, every night this week we'll have a revival service Yeah, just something. bring them in. Yeah. But on a regular basis as if, okay, well, I'm just going to, I'm going to bring you to church. Let me give you an example. I was, had a discussion about this. It was a heated one too. (laughs) And I didn't make it that way because they were just mad at me about this thing. And they said, well, if I didn't go, you know, if I didn't, uh, if my friend hadn't brought me to church, then I never would have been saved and whatever. And uh, my response to that was, well, let me ask you this. What do you think would have happened if instead of bringing you to church, that they would have brought you to Christ, how soon do you think that you would have become a part of the church? Uh, what we normally think of is that we kind of put everything on elders and pastors and mm-hmm. church service to do what the church is called to do. Yeah. Uh, he didn't call us to in, in, in the whole structure of how we have things today. So, I, you know, it's like I say in the book, I mean, the seeker sensitive model is backwards. Um, that's not it's not even the purpose of the gathering of the church. Uh, that's not the church. Um, the church gets together for and I lay out the four reasons and the four foundations of why the church gathers. And I also lay out the four foundations of why unbelievers don't have anything, any business yeah. with that. Well, if, if we're talking about things like worship, Lord's Supper, glorifying God, obviously, if you're not a believer, you can't do those things. You can't, but not only that, let me give you some other ones that I put in there. Not only that, but fellowship. I mean, not really. Encouragement of the saints. You know, you, you can't fellowship with an unbeliever. You two are going in two different directions. I mean, so like it says in Amos, can two walk together unless they agree? The answer to that is rhetorical. It's no, you can't. So you can't really fellowship. It says be you not equally 
unequally yoked with unbelievers, right? So it says that in Corinthians. Now, when we normally think of, we think of just marriage. That's not what it means. It means unbelievers, period, in many different aspects, but especially in the context of the gathering of the church, which is for the church, is for God, is to glorify God. Um, part of it, and then you mentioned one that I mentioned in the book, is worship. Um, I mean, you can't worship God. But one that really that I, don't, I think a lot of people just misunderstand is prayer. Uh, just the f- very fact and just read the book. But I am going to say this and I know that there's going to be some questions and uh, probably some um, some people who disagree. But really, you know, God doesn't hear an unbeliever's prayer. As a matter of fact, God doesn't even hear a Christian's prayer when he has sin in his heart and he's keeping sin in his heart. That's laid out in the book. I'm not even going to any, go any further than that. And, the, and there's plenty of scripture that talks about that, but it's understanding that. And listen, this is what's great about that. But we do. We have access. Mm-hmm. We, as the people of God, that's just, just understanding the privilege of the church. But um, when, you know, we just kind of do these things in the modern day church, we just kind of do things. And this is just how we do things. And it's kind of like, OK, we do things like that. But is it biblical? Is it founded on the word of God? That is really what we need to say. Uh, and I was just talking to somebody yesterday about, you know, they they live down in Columbus, young man. And we were talking about the importance of the word of God. And he was telling me his pastors down there would be like, you know, they don't really count on the Bible so much. <laughs> and it's like, well, that's an encouraging thing to hear from your pastor. <laughs> kind of like what? <laughs> that's just what we want to hear from the pastor. <laughs> we're going to read the Bible, but don't, don't pay too much attention to it. It's a I lot just of told him, I book. said, here's just what you do with him. Run hard, run <laughs> fast. fast. Okay, yes. get out. <laughs> yeah, find another church at that point. We're, we're talking with David Washington. He's the author of the book, Stop Bringing Them to Church. Who the church is, isn't, and why we should keep it that way. It's, it's a provocative book, but I think a really uh, it's a challenging book, but I think a book that, that if you wrestle with, you'll be greatly rewarded. And we do have a copy of David's book. If you'd like a copy, 419-240-1937 or 1-800-457-1937 and you can get a copy of David's book Stop Bringing Them to Church David, hey, thanks so much for being in this morning It's been, it's been a, a great conversation Hey, thank you for having me You guys be blessed Yes, FM.